Are the Warriors about to make a huge trade? One of the teams that's had a lot of question marks around what they're going to do this offseason is the Warriors. Because the Warriors are in an interesting spot. You still have Steph Curry. And they want to win as many titles as they can with him. And they still have a chance to win a title next year with him because he's still that good. You saw the young guys get a lot better. Kaminga took a huge step. Brandon Pajemski, his rookie year, he was so good. He led the he led the league in charges taken. And then you still have Draymond, who I know there was a lot surrounding him last year with his suspension and stuff like that, but we cannot deny his impact. And when he came back from that, he was very, very good. So the Clay Thompson thing, you know, about him being a free agent and is he going to resign or not, that is something that is being discussed. But here's another thing that they could do, and that is Chris Paul being traded. When they traded for Chris Paul, if you go back and watch the live stream I did on it, I said in that video, this felt like a D'Angelo Russell move to me. I said to me, it felt like they were trading for Chris Paul in order to trade for another player. And I honestly thought Chris Paul might have been traded at the trade deadline unless the team was like rolling and they were number one, number one in the West. And they were just like clearly the championship favorite. And then obviously they wouldn't make a move. But I thought that Chris Paul would be moved at some point. I thought it would be the trade deadline, maybe the offseason. And now we're here. The reason I felt that way is because if you go back to the D'Angelo Russell thing, that was when, you know, Clay got hurt and KD left and all that stuff. And so, well, I thought D'Angelo at the time, and honestly, if they were healthy, Maybe it would have been a better fit. Like, to be fair, that team was not healthy at all. But regardless, D'Angelo Russell was not the perfect fit. But what they do, they took D'Angelo Russell, they saw an opportunity, and they traded for Wiggins, who, guess what, was awesome and was, like, one of their best players when they won the championship. Now, again, did they trade for D'Angelo knowing they would trade for Wiggins or something like that? We could never know. But that's what the Chris Paul trade felt like to me. And so now we're here and Chris Paul, his $30 million, I believe will be guaranteed on June 28th. And they have the option to push that back, push back the date of the guaranteed contract, which you know will be something that they discuss. But Chris Paul can be used as leverage to make a massive trade for the Warriors. Because Chris Paul, his money is, I think it's $30 million for next year. So the contract itself is a good number in order to trade for a player because, again, the players who make that kind of money are typically very good players. Not only that, but Chris Paul is on the last year of his deal. And although Chris Paul is, I believe, going to be 39 on this contract, maybe 40, I think it's 39 though, Chris Paul still adds value to teams. And we just saw him this year. He can come off the bench, so... You know, you don't have to be concerned about him having to start and play 40 minutes. His health is always a question, but when he's on the court, you know he's going to make some kind of impact. And one thing he's great at is making young guys and maximizing their talent. We saw it when he was on the Clippers with Blake and DeAndre Jordan. We saw it when he went to OKC with Shea Gilgis Alexander. And we saw it this year with Golden State. Now, you know, some of those things may have been coincidence. But also, Chris Paul helps young guys get better. It just happens everywhere he goes. So maybe somewhat coincidence, but you can't deny that when he's there, the young guys seem to get better. And then when he leaves, whatever you know, kind of skills and knowledge that he taught them, they'll take with them. And Golden State is going to try to make a move because they want to win this upcoming season because you never know how many years you have left, you know, with someone being in their prime, especially someone as special as Steph Curry. So I would be, I would be shocked if they didn't make a big move this offseason. Now the trade market is going to be very interesting this summer because the new CBA kicks in and there's a lot of teams just kind of, a lot of question marks around them. Like not necessarily because they're not good, but just because like, we don't know what everyone's going to try to do with their players given this new CBA. I still think Giannis is on the table, not just for the Warriors, but for everybody. Like, I would be on Giannis' watch. But the Warriors should definitely be trying to monitor Giannis because 
We haven't heard anything yet, so this is just my opinion. But do you remember when the Warriors won the title in 2022 and then KD requested a trade from Brooklyn? And to be fair, it could have been just coincidence. There was a lot going on in Brooklyn, you know, with the Harden and Kyrie situation and stuff like that. But there was a report that came out and I don't know if it was ever 1000% confirmed. I don't think KD ever said anything. But when the Warriors won the title, there was some kind of report that came out and I forgot who posted it, but it was some kind of credible source. And they were saying how basically when the Warriors won the title, KD kind of won it out of Brooklyn because the Warriors just won the title again without him, if that makes sense. I forgot the report's exact words, but it was basically kind of like KD wanted to win another title because he just saw that Golden State won a title without him again. So again, those were not the exact words. I don't remember who reported it, and I don't know if it was a thousand percent confirmed. But think about it. The Bucks traded Drew Holiday to the Boston Celtics. And what they do? They won the title this year. And although they would never, okay, I don't know, <laughs> but I would assume with a player of Giannis's caliber, they would not trade Drew without Giannis's consent. Like not that he wanted Drew gone. I don't think he did. I think there's been plenty of reports talking about how good of a teammate Drew is and stuff like that. But they brought whatever the trade was to Giannis and they said, look, we're going to get Dame and all this stuff. And so, like, I think he signed off on Drew going to the Blazers, if that makes sense. Again, I'm not saying he wanted Drew gone, but that he consented in order to get Dame. So going back a few clips, I think I just said they traded Drew to Boston. That's not what I meant. I meant that they traded him to the Blazers, who then traded him to Boston. But by them trading him indirectly gave Boston a championship. Like, you know, I'm not just saying Drew was the only one who was on the team, but... Adding Drew Holiday got them a championship. Like, he might have been the missing piece. And so with all that said, who's to say Giannis isn't fed up because they haven't won a championship and they haven't even gotten to the finals since they won the championship. And now they traded Drew Holiday, who turned out to be... I mean, I didn't think they should have traded him when the trade happened, but turned out to just win another title the same year he was traded... Who's to say Giannis isn't unhappy and wants out? Another player that I think the Warriors could trade for would be Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson because I feel like they would package them two together. And so Brooklyn is in a, a, it's back to Brooklyn again, but Brooklyn's in a weird situation where they have some young guys like Cam Thomas, Nick Claxton, who they're not going to move, of course. But they have guys like Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson who are making big money and are, I guess Cam Johnson's maybe like hitting his prime now, kind of. But Mikael Bridges is clearly in his prime. But his value has gone down since he was traded to Brooklyn. And so I feel like now is the time to trade Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson because we've heard Nets ownership, I guess this was confirmed. I feel like I saw it. I don't know if it was a direct quote, but like that they want to rebuild. So if they want to rebuild, you got to make a trade. And what better, like, does Mikhail Bridges not fit perfectly on the Warriors and Cam Johnson too, but like mainly Mikhail Bridges, a 3 and D guy, like that's, that's perfect. And you can use Chris Paul's salary as leverage and maybe it's a three team deal. And again, there will always be like picks and stuff like that involved. But I'm just saying like the centerpiece is Chris Paul because of his contract and because it's only the last year, the Nets will have his money off the books. And what did we talk about earlier? Chris Paul makes young guys better. You got a bunch of young guys in Brooklyn. Nick Claxton, Cam Thomas get to learn from Chris Paul. Their skill and knowledge will go up a lot. So look out for that.